Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you're all safe and sound. Real Madrid take on Athletic Bilbao in the final of the Spanish Super Cup, and the Los Blancos would be looking to lift the trophy for the 12th time in their history. We face Athletic for the third time this season, with Madrid being victorious in the past two encounters with the narrowest of margins. And once again, we can expect this encounter to be a very tight affair. Real Madrid have been successful in overpowering Athletic in the past few years, but as we remember, in in the past season, Athletic had knocked out Real Madrid in the Spanish Super Cup. So this, as you see, is an opportunity for the Los Blancos to get things even in this competition. And hopefully, the team will return to Spain with a trophy in hand. We also have some news regarding the latest player on Real Madrid's transfer list. And if this transfer happens, the Catalans would have their blood boiling. It truly would be a nasty one stealing one of the jewels. So in this video, we'll discuss the latest master plan that Mr. Florentino may be having. We'll go through the words of Carlo Ancelotti from the pre-match press conference and last but not the least we'll end this video by doing the match predictions so come on let's get started and firstly if we start by the latest coverage of the news outlet AS that came out of the very bold headline stating that Real Madrid are planning to sign the Barcelona defender Ronald Araujo when his contract comes to an end in the summer of 2023 they further state that according to Catalan radio station KNB talks on a new deal have stalled with the Uruguayan and Real Madrid may step in to get the service of the youngster whom they have been tracking since 2018. Madrid apparently had attempted to sign Araujo back then but Ramon Planes, who was the technical secretary of Barcelona at that point, had moved more quickly and had snapped up the team defender. He has gone to mention that since Laporta and his board already have their hands full with the new arrival of Ferran Torres and the renewals of Gavi and Usman Dembele, they haven't been able to hammer down a deal for the young centre-back and this keeps rekindling the interest of Real Madrid in the youngster. And Shedding some thoughts on the transfer rumour, it is very understandable why Perez may be interested in signing Ronald Araujo. He seems like a solid centre-back, he's tall, strong, and along with that he has the pace as well. He truly has been a standout performer in this Barcelona side. He came off with some big goals in the previous few months. He can get you goals from set pieces, and I'm quite certain that he's going to be a very crucial piece for Xavi in the days to come. Barcelona fans as well are very hopeful that Araujo would be the leader in defence for possibly the next decade. Pique, as we know, is in the dusk of his Barcelona career and the Catalans are hopeful that with Pique gone, their defence would be in safe hands with Araujo in the back line. So yes, if you ask my honest opinion, I rate Ronald Araujo very highly. He looks to have all the qualities of a modern centre-back. Being an Uruguayan, you can also see he's tenacious in the way he goes about his business and I wouldn't have any issue if we can get the quality centre-back for free. However, I don't feel it's going to happen. For all the reasons I stated above, Laporta is not going to let his jewel leave, especially at this point where Barcelona are undergoing a rebuild phase. It also seems that Araujo associates himself with the club and is grateful for the opportunity Barcelona have provided him. But let's wait and see. It certainly would be an outrageous act if somehow Mr. Florentino could sign him. But if you had to put your money on any person who would be audacious enough to do it, it's that man, Florentino Perez Rodriguez. Moving on, let's do the match preview of Real Madrid versus Athletic Bilbao. Firstly, if we speak about the opposition, Athletic have won the cup on three occasions in the past with the latest triumph coming against Barcelona last year when they beat them 3-2 in the final of the competition and in the current version they beat Atletico in the semi-final by two goals to one. They were the team who had fallen behind but they showed the grit and the determination to complete a sensational comeback. They left everyone shocked and with the triumph Athletic have now beaten the big three of Spanish football in the past three encounters in the competition. So definitely Athletic will keep the past results in mind preparing for this encounter. They will have gained confidence from the previous results. They are now unbeaten in the past four games in all competition and for a club like Athletic, winning the trophy would constitute a huge success. They aren't really in the running to win La Liga, neither do they have any access to elite European competitions, so a chance of winning silverware is surely going to leave them extra motivated and since they are the defending champions, you can expect the team to put up a good fight against the Spanish giants. And talking about the manager of Athletic, Marcelino has always been a tough coach to deal with. He has a lot of experience having successful stints in the previous club that he has managed. The 4-4-2 has been his trusted setup and once again we can expect him to have a similar approach in this game. Athletic would be missing the likes of Vencedor, Unai Nunes, Via Libre and Andre Kappa. All of them are expected to be on the sidelines but in defense Oscar De Marcos and Mikel Balenciaga are likely to take up the fullback spots. Danny Garcia and Mikel Vesca are expected to occupy the central areas in the midfield. They would be aided by captain Ika Munyain and Nico Williams on either side and finally in attack Oyan San 
Kanse may be partnering the speedster Iñaki Williams to lead Athletic from the front. And now if we talk about Real Madrid, we have received the news that Danny Carvajal has been ruled out due to COVID and it's very disappointing to see that Carvajal for some reason or the other isn't getting a consistent run of games under his belt. Injuries have slowed him down, neither is he getting any form of luck to retain the level that he previously had. He truly is going through a rough patch and let's extend our best wishes for a speedy recovery and a swift return to action. There have also been reports suggesting that David Alaba may not be fit enough to start the game. He has trained with the team but Angelotti may not be willing to take any risk with the Austrian and it is more likely that Nacho Fernandes will retain his place in the starting 11. And finally Marco Asensio has picked up a muscular problem and has been ruled out for the all-important clash. Moving on, let's hear what the coach had to say in the pre-match press conference. He spoke about the opposition and addressed the questions pertaining to the playing style of Madrid. But firstly, while assessing the opposition, Angelotti said, Athletic have a range of attributes including a solid defence, organisation, pace up top and quality on set pieces, which we have to bear in mind. Our approach will be different to the semi-final because Athletic have different characteristics to Barcelona. Then Angelotti was asked about his relationship with Marcelino and the coach replied, We don't know each other a lot, but it's a friendship that we have created over time. I saw a photo where we faced each other in 1987 and I didn't remember it. As for his management, he does a very good job. He controls the small details very well and his teams are always very well organized from start to finish. I saw the game against Atletico. His team never gives up. Then the coach was asked about the critics of Real Madrid's style of playing. Not everyone was on board with the way Real Madrid played against Barcelona and Angelotti addressed those remarks. He said, I respect everyone. Every facet of football is to be respected. You might want to keep the ball because you've got more chance of winning and of showing an identity. Against Cadiz, for instance, they made life hard for us. There's not some magic approach which guarantees you'll win. The perfect system doesn't exist. You don't win every time because you play with the ball or on the counter. A game can be won on set pieces too. If we play defensive football one day, it doesn't mean we are a defensive team. We've scored more goals than any other team in La Liga. He also went on to defend the counter-attacking approach as he said, I'm thrilled to hear that Madrid are playing well on the counter because it's not easy at all. You have to play vertically and have players who can release the pass at the perfect moment, as well as forwards who come onto it at just the right time. In our third goal against Barcelona, we had six players in the box, not just one. We didn't win because of a long hoof up to Vinicius. There were three or four short passes and it was a well-worked counter-attack. I'm delighted if people are saying that we are playing on the counter. And lastly, Angelotti was questioned if today's game would be a difficult one for Vinicius due to the lack of spaces. And Angelotti responded, he will have space on the outside, but we want him to also go in the middle and help Benzema. He did that against Valencia. I don't just want him to play on the side. It's a quality that he doesn't have yet, but you can also take advantage of his speed without the ball. So that concludes the pre-match thoughts of Carlo Angelotti. And let's conclude this video by doing the match predictions. In goal, undeniably, there would be Thibaut Coutoua. The centre-back pairing should comprise of Eda Militao and Nacho Fernandes. In the left-back position, Fulon Mendy will start, and on the right, we can expect Lucas Vasquez to fill in for Danny Carvajal. In the midfield, it is likely that Angelotti may go with KCM, but I also like one of the suggestions that our community members, Mr. Mushkur, has put forward. We may just put Modric in place of Cruz, and we do know that Modric can play in that position very well. That is what happened when Cruz was out injured early in the season and then we could be playing Valverde in his preferred position at right midfield. He would help in breaking the press of Athletic and would bring more verticality to Madrid's gameplay. So definitely that is something that Angelotti can contemplate upon. And finally in attack it does seem that Benzema would be leading the line along with the two Brazilian boys. So that as you see is my predicted lineup and as for the score and predictions I predict Real Madrid 2 Athletic Bilbao 1. And that is all I have here. Do let me know how how you're feeling ahead of the game and what scoreline are you predicting right in the comments below i'll see you soon till then take care glory to madrid and as always a madrid